Hello guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Liza McCarthy, a digital artist. Make sure to check my social media down in the description. So uh, today I'm going to be making a review, sort of like a flip through, of this precious art book that I've got and I have no regrets of getting it. It's called Sketch with Asia, um, manga inspired art and tutorials by Asia Ladovska. So basically, this art book is in hardcover and it's completely gorgeous. I've actually loved this illustrator and um, let's see what's inside. So basically this is kind of the first page and then we have the whole sort of information. This illustration is so beautiful. As you can see, it's done with a mechanical pencil. I am a beginner artist and I cannot draw this well, so this book actually inspires me and has some amazing tips, really, really helpful tips to advance your art. It's such a great read. So these are the contents page, and then we have forward, and then we have an introduction, basically. And here is the first chapter, which is behind the scenes. Right. The About Me page, and again, beautiful artwork. I really wish my sketches would look this pretty. And my workspace page. Chapter about creative journey. And let's see what it is about early influences. I really love these pages. Now hyperrealism. I mean, the whole book itself is a pretty great read and I do recommend it. Uh, we have this sort of page with her inspirations and the writing and everything was, let's just say inspiring, it was very interesting. Uh, this one is gorgeous. I mean, if you really look at the sketch and how it started out, you can't really believe that it- you could actually believe that the sketch progressed into this sort of masterpiece. And her advice are quite interesting, actually. There was this advice that has inspired me about a mechanical pencil because I was actually using an IG pencil and I was like, you know, I have to sharpen all the time and it isn't the best thing. Personally for me, it's not really my preference. And she completely gives advice and shows what stationery she uses for traditional art. That's uh, quite interesting. There's a progression page with those four artworks and they're beautiful, really. Um, the personal favorite one is this one. It's so beautiful, has so much depth. And, you know, I really love that her artworks aren't just like pretty girls like what I do they show a story behind it. They have a story behind it and you can kind of figure it out or think of it, you can imagine there's a lot of space. And her storytelling is done through her art. And that is such a beautiful thing. I mean, really look at this. It's it's so beautiful. Okay. And then I really love this illustration. It may be one of my favorite ones in the whole art book. It's, I just love the contrast of the white and the black compared to the orange fox. It's so vibrant and beautiful and I really, really love, love the whole aesthetic of it. This one is also so cute, oh my god. She has a lot of advice that I used, especially starting a sketchbook. I wasn't actually quite confident or sure that I should start a sketchbook, but thanks to her art book, it actually inspired me to start an, you know, a sketchbook and practice every day. And she talks all about art blog and um, self-esteem and basically advice to avoid burnout. These are great, really great advice. I really, really love the details of this artwork. And personally, I really like the hair, the hair color and the way it glows. And she talks here all about style. Really like these illustrations of hers 
where there's a background and there's just like black and white. Here is the gallery. Now this is a very interesting chapter. This is sort of a all like not a, like the chosen artwork for the book into this gallery section. So there's just gonna be basically like illustrations of hers. Again, I'm I'm really fascinated by the sketches. And if we're talking about basically the quality of the book, it's quite sturdy and actually an amazing quality. Truly, you could really feel that she actually worked on it and it's like very thick texture, very smooth texture and the artworks again are amazing of hers. And the way she draws hair, like the, all the details and fragments, I can't do that. I'm, I'm yet to do that, let's just say. Hair is always a frustrating thing. If you are an artist, you may know that. The hair and hands are just like quite hard. In terms of color palettes, her girls are amazing. They're really, I wish I could come up with that because I'm very hard picking the color palette and then kind of settling with it and working with the shades and all of this is just beautiful. It's really an inspirational book and I really recommend getting it. This one, phenomenal. You could tell so much of the story basically by just looking at it. I'm working on a webtoon and I do hope that I could, I'm still trying to work on my art style before creating a webtoon or something major, but I did feel like I want my characters and my drawings to tell a story. I did create some characters. The best artworks are those that could tell a story because it gives so much depth. I had this on this art course that I was doing and uh, they actually did say that the best art is the one that could tell a story. It's very vibrant, it's amazing for comics, it's amazing for journals. So here's the getting started page. This is the technical page where she has all the tools listed. Um, she talks about the things she uses, the lead she uses, the mechanical pencils she uses, uh, basically all those good stuff. The sketchbooks she uses, her sketching process, which is phenomenal, like it's so beautiful. I wish my sketches looked like this. And she just completely goes into detail of sketching and how she started. Sketching. She actually recommends drawing in cafes and watching people or watching animals and drawing them. And I really manifest that my sketch spreads look like this. It's so busy, yet it's completely, every single sketch is refined and detailed. She recommended to do warm-up sketches, short warm-up sketches. And here she just talks about the do's and don'ts of it. And she talks about how warm-up sketches help enhance our overall art. And I really, really, really like it. Then there's thumbnail sketching, which was something I was never introduced to, honestly. As an artist, I haven't heard of it. I never knew of such thing as thumbnail sketching. I was never introduced to it. But it comes quite in handy, especially when you're drawing poses. And she does talk about concept sketching and everything created to an artwork. That's quite interesting because you could see the sort of the character and then the thumbnail. Then you see this whole beautiful artwork made from these. I want to try more of concept sketching. That should be a, a goal of mine. Then we have observational sketching, which is something that she's recommended highly. There are some mistakes she talks about while sketching. She talks about avoiding construction and not changing up lines, about overthinking lines, smallest details and many lines and stuff, and then just basically too round or too straight and starting with large page. So all this are super helpful. They really do give you a lot of insight and a lot of great wisdom, if you will. Techniques and advice. This is where she shows how to draw things, like she draws the head, how she draws different sort of angles, and this sort of diagram, little diagram where the head is pointed, is so useful. And then 
all those are such beautiful sketches. I really want to try and draw them. And the eyes and the finishing of the details. Vibe sketches, oh my god, this one is amazing. And she talks about art style and these are some sort of examples of the art style she shows. And expressions are really, really helpful, especially how she uses eyebrows and both eyes to express what she wants to show and how she feels. She talks about not only adding the depth in the eyebrows, but trying to add in with the eyes. And I, to be honest, I'm guilty of using only the eyebrows for expression, so that helps. Now, the hand sector is something that's quite interesting. Like, look at those beautiful hand sketches. I'm sorry, but you know that you are a professional artist once you can tackle the hands and make them perfect in any position. I tell you that for sure. She talks about how she breaks them down into shapes, right? Those basic sort of shapes, like how she analyzes them and how she turns them and defines them into hand shapes. It did help. And there's so much challenging hand poses. I mean, like, I'm really bad at anatomy, so this is beautiful, godly advice. Um, drawing hair and styles and and then she shows quite a few hairstyles you could do she shows quite a few how to hairstyles which some of the hairstyles i didn't even think of them like this is so cute this one this hairstyle i've never thought of it before when you look at her arts you can see how much of it is inspired by manga and it's beautiful actually i mean they have so much vibrant hairstyle beautiful eyes these are the sort of eyes i want to make the styles stylistic eyes and um. here are the processes this is the chapter where she talks about how she uses copic markers and she shows the sort of like the number i guess right that's the number of the marker or the color and she just shows how to color it in so if you're using copics that's especially especially helpful it wasn't really it was I, it was a nice read though but i don't personally use copics i mean i'm not far too experienced to invest in copics yet but maybe someday i will Hopefully, uh, because I personally think that for now, I'm just main digital art and then sketching and I just use like pencils and stuff and see what comes out of it. So this is actually very helpful if you're in the Copics. And then she just talks about traditional art to digital art, which is quite interesting. And the sketches, oh my God, really, really beautiful. She talks all about those sketches and it's actually amazing to see that. Um, and then she talks about choosing colors. This is something I struggle with, so this was really, really helpful. Just look at the same artwork and look at all the color options you can get. How much you could play around with. That's, that's amazing, actually. Um, this one is really vibrant, and this is sort of like, um, very classical. A classical interpretation, if you may. Uh, digital to traditional art. Mm -hmm. That looks cool. Really cool. And... This is, I think, how most of us sketch. We start from this, and especially in digital art, where you can just like lower the opacity on the first layer and continue drawing. And this is a proper sketch, you know. But it's okay to have those sort of. And she talks about how you could actually perfect and then just outline it onto your sketchbook or paper or whatever. And she talks about the process with the Copics and how she colors and how she actually recommends doing either the darker first or the lighter, lighter color first, actually. Um, and it's actually quite interesting so that the dark ones, uh, sort of light doesn't bleed onto the black colors and basically it's an amazing read. And then traditional illustration in general. And I just love how she not only does digital art, but she loves and focuses on sketches, which is something I think most digital artists could use. I feel like, um, I feel like real, real, real raw practice, the art that is beneficial to you and very relaxing and satisfying is definitely going to be traditional art, in my opinion, with all due respect. I feel like traditional art brings so much joy and it's very tedious and meticulous and sort of like work on it, it's beautiful. And then this is how my sketches actually look, like expectation versus reality sort of moment. But I just love how she actually shows us the real raw beginning sketches, right? The concept sketch and then it goes to the minor fixes and so on and into the choosing a color palette, and then she sort of talks about how she does it and how she makes the back hair light and color dodge. It's an extremely useful feature. And then it's just the whole depth and she adds with this darker sort of background and the light at the back is amazing. The butterflies, everything is just, the visuals are so stunning. And then she talks about the front cover illustration, which is something I was actually interested about before 
you know, going to the last, last chapter. This looks cute, and this one looked cute, but I don't think, personally, this one would have fit the art book cover, so did I think not this one. This one, I think, yeah, I think she completely chose the right one, personally. This one looked like an art cover material. This does not. It looks amazing, but I don't think, because the back would look bare, but this, whole another level, seriously. And, I mean, if you think about what, what she has, what she thinks of, and imagines her whole, you know, her whole visual, you know, kind of library, you just look at this and you go, you're in awe of her art. It's beautiful. Really beautiful. The ideas, the colors, everything is like, it was supposed to be that night way. You could see that something that was made. And again, we have one more sketch, which is beautiful. A thank you note. And you know me, I always read thank you notes and all the other stuff. And basically that's the end of this book. So do write me in the comments if you want me to review any other book, art book particularly, uh, that you may want and you want to sort of have a review, an honest review, then let me know. And I hope you like this video. Um, click the notification bell below, subscribe, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Um, a comment will be nice to support me and check out my Instagram. And in my podcast, link down below, Digital Struggles with Liza McCarthy. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next video.